Hi, good morning, and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. So we do this every um, Sunday at 8 a.m. London time, and it's really just a sort of, I want to say, catch up with, on the news from Zimrip got for this week. So um, some of the news, that's, or some of the things that we've been up to this week, um, really had some very interesting um, and ex uh, exciting for us news um, this week, really regarding... Um, some of our um, technologies uh, around um, measurements because um, one of the things that people are very kind of obviously interested in you know and rightly so is they're super interested in accuracy and they're super interested in precision and so we have some technologies where we're actually able to make something like six measurements um, on a single sample I've personally not been a, in super um, to sort of um, enthusiastic for this approach to trying to get accuracy and precision. You know, I like to get accuracy and precision by you know, making a good sensor and making a good sensor system, putting the sample on there and, you know, essentially making a single measurement and using, you know, good um, excitation protocols and using good um, um, signal extraction protocols. So I have traditionally not wanted to make multiple sensors in order to read a single sample and therefore get accuracy and precision um, from that. I just wanted, um, but actually, I mean, I, I have to sort of slightly change my mind on this because, um, you know, the good thing about having such a, you know, a strong company is that the guys um, went ahead and were doing some measurements and they actually made multiple measurements on one sample and actually, I was really pleasantly surprised by how good the results were. So as in Peacock, we are able to design systems that make single measurements on single samples and give essentially a single result. At the same time, because of our technology um, stack, we are actually able to make, for example, six measurements on a single sample. Look at those six measurements in the simplest format. We can just um, average but actually we could be more sophisticated than that and actually reject things like outliers. Um, and the Julie system allows us to do that. So I have been, my opinion on, on how to get accuracy and precision, you know, has been influenced this week. And I really appreciate the team for kind of, you know, es essentially educating me around that. I want to just say hi to Ahmet this week. Good morning, Ahmet. I hope you're doing well. Um, and thank you for staying in touch with us. It's been a long time now that you've been um, staying in touch with us. So thanks very much. Um, some other news this week as well is that I just kind of made this statement that says, you know, ZP, we like to, you know, we, we want to make our sensors precise and accurate. And traditionally, we haven't, I haven't sort of suggested to people actually that they make multiple measurements on one sample. But I just said, look, my opinion has actually been changed on this. The nice thing is as well is I know it doesn't work for all applications, um, but it does Sometimes well, it, it doesn't work for all applications and we can talk about edge computing. But at the moment, if I assume that in a lot of applications, it's OK to take a measurement, send the data to the cloud, um, process the data in the cloud and get the result back in those applications, then um, we can use our Julie database. And it's important because when you make measurements on the device itself, sometimes you're blinded to actually what's going on. But if you can grab that raw data, send it to the cloud and then process it in the cloud, then, you know, if there's ever a concern or an error, then you can see it in the cloud and you can troubleshoot really quickly. So, for example, um, Ahmet's online at the, mo at the moment. Um, Ahmet did his um, sort of masters around um, electronics and analog electronics for biosensing. Um, and there he would have kind of had an... Um, his data format would have been something like a, um, a text file or a comma separated variable, which is also worth saying that you can upload those to Julie as well. So I'm a big proponent in um, getting, even if you're making local calculations and measurements on a device, I'm a big component, a proponent rather, in getting that data to the cloud. And anyway, so um, one of our engineers, Syndra, has been making um, videos about um, Julie and how to uh, analyze and um, store data um, on Julie. 
So, and the nice thing about Julia as well is that you can also sort of essentially download the data um, later on as well. So it's not locked up into that. So he's made three videos this week. One of them was just sort of an introduction. Um, one of the other videos um, that he's also made is automating um, data analysis. And he makes a quite nice comment in this video that, because he says that you know, when you first do research, um, there's a lot of variables going on. You do a lot of different types of experiments. But actually, once a product starts to mature or a program starts to mature, the, vari the number of experiments that you do um, gets narrower and narrower and you, you end up doing the same experiment. So in that point, it's actually quite good to be able to go into the lab, do an experiment, and then actually report the experiment in a, in a standard, essentially, report format. And so Sindra, in one of his videos, he says, look, we have, um, in Julie, we have the ability to upload data, and we also have the ability to then have these templates. Um, the template, it can really save you um, hours in the end uh, per year. If, you know, I mean, if you, do this, if you do this daily and weekly, then it can really save you a lot of time. And so what these templates do is it allows you to standardize your data processing and take out a lot of um he i think he uses the word monotony uh i think cindra's kind of uh, mantra is you know if you have to do it once that's fine if you have to do it twice then it's possibly starts time to start automating this and so he's a big um, proponent of automating so he's been um really um key in automating our data processing so as i said he made um three videos this week and then the third video that he made which is really good is at zp we do a lot of um sensor characterization and also sort of sensor checking make sure these sensors actually work and so he describes that you can identify a feature in julie um or in your data rather and julie will then analyze that feature and extract data from you people do this manually things through things like excel um and it's actually terrible it's not terrible. It's just it's very manual. I mean, I've done it myself. Um, but with Julie, if the data is electrochemical, um, often if the data is in a format like CSV or text file, um, or is coming off an instrument like, um, like PalmSense, which is a P session file, or um, also our um, software, we can actually automate the feature extraction as well, and start doing things like calibration curves um, automatically. So. So far this week, you know, I've sort of said, you know, we are very interested in precision and um, accuracy of seeing sensors. For me, data science is a really important part of this. And so for us, you know, we kind of realize our data science through Julie. But actually, you can also kind of get to precision and accuracy just by making, for example, six measurements on um, blood and averaging the pH that way. It's... It's a, I would call it a shotgun approach, but actually I think it re it generally can work, and I was a bit surprised. Um, but at the same time, then we can also send all that data to Julie and actually be very sophisticated in our analysis and the um, crunching of that data. So we can almost get like a an improvement upon an improvement um, through the data science. So thank you to Syndra for making um, those videos this week. Um, and I appreciate um, Ahmet um, coming online this morning because I know he does um, follow quite a few of our um, webinars. So every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time, we do do a webinar for members of our, of our developer zone. And we go through kind of questions from the week. And so we did have some um, interesting questions this week. One of the things that we did cover was that we're, we are having an awful lot of, not an awful lot, we're having a lot of workshops at the moment. Um, we're really trying to organize ourselves into India for a workshop. Um, we do have workshops in the UK. We do have workshops in Norway. And we do have workshops in California. Anyway, that said, we were also talking this week, not just about the workshops in our um, ZP Developers Zone webinar, but we were also talking about the detection of blood. And I'm super interested in the detection of blood. I like no, saying I like blood. That sort of suggests something slightly sinister, but... No, blood, if you're trying to detect blood as opposed to just other solutions, then blood has a very strong um, signal. And so when I get inquiries about, you know, I want to sometimes detect blood rather than just necessarily quantifying blood, but detecting it, 
then I do feel like, you know, the electrochemical techniques that we use at Zimmer and Peacock are particularly um, good at doing that. Now, another in interesting um, inquiry we had this week was really about um, building biosensors. I know it's really frustrating for people in academia that they want to get this kind of reproducibility um, of their sensors. Um, but when you really see how we actually do it and, and how we do it at Zim and Peacock, it's a real team effort, you know, and it's something that we've built up over the years. So what I mean by that is, you know, we screen print, for example, electrodes and we characterize the batch of electrodes to make sure that they're within, um, you know, specification. Interestingly, I was just talking about feature identification and feature analysis um, because Sindra had made those videos. And the reason that we have this capability within Julie is because we use it in our manufacturing. So I do feel the frustration in academia for trying to make reproducible sensors. It's, but it's because, you know, to do this, you, you have to build a business like Zimmer and Peacock. And that business has to be around for quite a while to essentially build all its processes. So one of the things that helps us with manufacturing is the fact that, you know, um, We've been, we've had this idea of reproducibility, you know, for since day one, and we've built it into the business, and we have a lot of quality systems around it. Now, when you build a biosensor, you have to get that kind of man of um, that screen printing reproducible, and then you often functionalize it, you know, at least with often two steps. One step might have a biological molecule in it, which gives you specificity, and another step might actually have. Um, the things like filters, you know, let's say you were trying to detect something in blood and you don't want all the um, other material in blood to affect your signal, then you might put a filter in place. So this often involves adding a polymer layer and then maybe another polymer layer. And each one of those steps can end up introducing um, a variability into it. And so we talked in our video about that we do sort of uh, constructive, sorry, non-destructive testing. So Visual inspection is is a example of non-destructive testing. A lot of people can manufacture and do visual inspection, but what we do on top of that then is also electrochemical, for example, characterization. And that really is unusual. And again, Julie is a database that we make available to other people. Why does Julie exist? Julie exists because in fact, you know, we use it for um doing what we call IQC, incoming quality control of our materials, in process control. So we sort of sample our production and make sure that we're within specification. Um, and then we do also do something called um, OQC, outgoing quality control, to make sure that the materials are again within um, specification. So we are following the whole process really you know, um, quite um, diligently uh, and that's part of being ISO 13485, but it's more than that. It's actually just about part of, if you can't get reproducibility, then you can't make sensors um, that can kind of give you accuracy um, and precision in the field. So a lot said today, but that was, a, it was a very sort of busy, let's say, um, presentation and webinar that we did on Thursday at 8am London time. Do you have any technical questions for us? You find us that we, we do a very sincere kind of... Um, attempt at answering those questions in our um, webinars. Um, something I would say significant as well this week is um, at Zimmer and Peacock, we've been developing um, a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor for fish uh, for quite some time. And of course, what we realize is that actually that CGM system is perfectly good for doing other non-human studies. One of the problems that we perceive um, at Zimmer and Peacock is people have ideas and then the gap and the cost from getting from that idea to a product is actually quite long. One of the steps along the way of developing an idea in the biosensor space is actually is actually doing um, studies. Um, they, these can be kind of non-human studies. Um, they're not lethal, by the way. What I mean by that is people test glucose monitors, for example, on um, pigs. Um, you know, pigs um, in some ways, you know, they um, have some sort of characteristics and mammalian characteristics that are s similar, similar enough to humans so that you can actually evaluate whether something like a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor is actually going to work. All that said, 
it's it's something that people have to do and it's something that people have to spend millions getting ready for before they actually do the test so at zp we're very unusual that actually we do have all this technology in place and so if the question is i need to get to pig studies and i need to kind of tick a um, essentially a box for my investors to say i've done this then we do have a um, a low cost way of people actually getting to those kind of studies um, and it does also show off you know how small um, the kind of analog and digital electronics for biosensors um, have now become and one of the things that we're now um, starting to do at ZP is actually um, flash or program electronics so if somebody needs a glucose board they can have a glucose board if they need a pH board they can have a pH board so making those electronics freely available is something we do and also making total systems available so people can do their um, non-human studies is also something that we're doing as well. This was related um, to something that came from the um, webinar this week, but we have been um, putting some more details out there about one of the commonest questions we get at Zimmer and Peacock is, can you manufacture my parts? And the answer is yes, we can manufacture your part. But manufacturing something especially when it's a biosensor. Biosensor is this combination of biology, chemistry, material science, process, process control. It's such a combination of things that, yes, I can manufacture your part, but of course, lots of people will answer the question, yes, I can manufacture your part. The, qu the part that they won't then commit to is what's the yield, what's the reproducibility, um, what's the precision of these processes. And so that actually, that's actually, a, almost a science question because you have to go back and do manufacturing type experiments in order to be able to answer that and so we do have a proof of principle manufacturing study where actually we find out where people are in their manufacturing and then we um, go we you know we, we find out where they're at learn from where they're at and then go then bring that process into our manufacturing and see essentially see, you know see how reproducible the process is at this moment before we then go on to make it essentially more um, complex. Not more complex, but um, more manufacturable. And then finally, um, I think this should also um, appeal to um, Ahmet. Um, it's actually taking these sensors out of the lab and putting them into sort of challenging um, types environments. So we do have, at Zimmer and Peacock, you know, people will approach us and say, I want to measure, you know, multiple pHs in some sort of um, flowing stream that would be an absolute classic and we would therefore say you know we have um, sensors we have to really protect these sensors from the ingression of liquid um, as everyone knows whenever you've got electronics and liquids these two things do not go well together so you know it gives you an extra um, need to protect the um, electrical connections etc and that, so we do have um, these I say potted. Potted is a sort of term that you know we use when we talk about sealing um, and protecting things. We sometimes describe it as potted. But anyway, we have these potted sensors that can go into um, challenging environments. The, the, the potting process is to try and keep the liquid out of the connections. And then we have electronics that go with these um, potted sensors that can measure something up, up to 15 sensors. Um, and so we started to do kits where we have sensor modules, electronics, base stations, and connectivity to the cloud so that we can do all of this measurement in the application of interest and make sure that all that data um, does go up to the cloud. Um, so I will just do a, I try to be a very quick summary of um, things that we've discussed this week. So it, it has been a busy week. Um, I have been pleasantly surprised by some of the strategies you can use to increase precision and uh, accuracy. And sometimes it's just making multiple measurements on the same sample. It's not something I've really promoted in my time, but having seen some new data, I'm like, okay, this is actually quite interesting. Um, also, we did three videos this week on Julie, and so much of what, even today, this conversation is about being about Julie, Julie, Julie. Julie is a tool that we provide to other people and they can just use it as they seem fit. From this conversation, I've been talking about manufacturing. You can see how in manufacturing, data is really important because Julie exists because we were using it um, for data. Don't forget our ZP Developer Zone. Every um, Thursday, 8 a.m. London time. This week, we talked about manufacturing and blood analysis. Um, next week, as the questions come in, you know, then we'll start addressing those ones. 
CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. We have put together a kit so people can do non-human studies. Um, and then finally, sensor mesh network. It's just the idea of taking some of these sensors that originally were developed for human health and putting them into um, industrial and process type applications. So I want to say, if you've got any questions on Zimmer and Peacock, please don't reach out. And please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us rather. Um, I think anyone who watches our ZP developers own webinars knows that we do a really good effort at um, trying to answer all those questions. So I want to say thank you very much to Ahmet this morning. Thank you very much um, if you've come a lot online and viewed. This goes out as a vlog and podcast and I just wish everyone um, a really uh, a good week and hope to see some of you on Thursday at our webinar. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.